Hey students, I want to give you a little bit more instruction this week. And so um, I hope you've had the opportunity to review the information that I shared with you about landscapes. Last week we worked on portraits, so the subject matter was people. This week our subject matter is places. Um, Courtney Cooper is our Cincinnati-based artist. Uh, he is on the autism spectrum. And being on the autism spectrum, it makes him hyper-focused and hyper-aware about um, his community and the area around, around him. Um, different people who have autism process things differently. And um, oftentimes, they show incredible memory, or they show musical ability or drawing ability. There's, there's always um, or often some, something like that. Um, I shared another video with you um, about the artist who paints landscapes, and he is completely blind. So uh, there are two very, very different kinds of landscapes. We have a cityscape, and we have a landscape. Um, since you are working with the students both Wednesday and Thursday this week, it might be helpful for you to be able to um, maybe do cityscapes one day and maybe landscapes the next day. So to give you some idea the difference, I'm going to sketch out here um, the, the process of a landscape. Um, you guys may or may not have been um, taught this in elementary school. You probably don't remember it. That's generally what I find. But um, when one is doing a landscape, their paper can be up and down or their paper can be side to side. It's up to you which way you would prefer. And oftentimes there is a horizon line. That horizon line, and I'm going to draw it super, 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 super light. Um, that horizon line is where the air touches the actual earth. And then um, depending on where you're actually, what you're actually drawing, um, maybe this horizon line, maybe it'll come up into a hill. And maybe there's another hill back here in the distance. So now we've created a space. Hopefully you start kind of seeing the space. Um, way, way back here, this is going to be the sky. The sky and these hills way far off in the distance become the background. Then we have an area in the middle. It's mid-ground. And then we have the stuff in the foreground, um, which is the stuff that's closest to us. The stuff in the background, I, I try to tell um, at least my Art One students, that this is almost like a story. And so this right back here establishes the time of day. It establishes the weather that's going on. It establishes, um, you know, kind of the, those, those types of things. So if I put a moon in the sky, we know that we're working on something dark. And that is going to make our foreground, it's going to make all of our colors darker. If I put a sunset happening, that's actually going to throw all of this into shadow. If I um, make this a gray cloudy sky or I make this a blue sky, then that's going to give us more colors. If it's a gray sky, our um, shadows wouldn't be as prominent in the foreground and midground. If it is a really bright sunny sky, depending on the time of day, it will really change our shadows and it will change our colors because color reacts um, co color is something that happens when light happens or light doesn't happen. So um, the green grass looks different based upon the kind of sunlight, moonlight, um, no sunlight, just cloudy skies has on it. Start paying attention to it and see if you can see that. So I have my, my sky out here, and I'm going to go ahead and just put some wispy clouds out here. A lot of times, um, students will put the big fluffy clouds. Sometimes they won't do anything at all. Um, this is kind of, um, we have a project called the Linear Landscape for my um, art ones that we're going to get started here shortly. And so that takes the landscape and makes it, makes it a little bit more accessible and easy to, easy to understand. So, uh, you know, these are definitely not real clouds. I'm not looking at a picture. I'm just kind of making them up as I go along. Um, 
I might have, you know, how sometimes the sun just peeps in and all of a sudden maybe some like crazy rays are happening because this is simply for fun. And then if I were coloring this, you know, this would be my sky color, but this would be a real bright white spot. But our students might make it yellow or orange. You might make it yellow or orange. Um, so I have these hills. I'm just going to pretend that this is water. So this is the edge of a lake for me and or maybe the, the edge of a sea. And so maybe these are areas that, you know, the water's kind of coming up on the up on the shore. And maybe I have, you know, this is kind of down here. Maybe this is going to go up into a little bit of a sand dune. And doo -doo, I'm going to kind of shade this down here. And I'm going to put maybe some trees down here. Now, when we get really, really, really far away, everything's really small. And you don't see details. And if you really go out there and you really look, oftentimes, you know, everything is just really very mild. Um, it's like it's, it's really, it's very hard to discern, you know, what's going on. We just know in our brain, we've created symbols in our brain to represent whatever this is happening out here. And then as things get a little bit closer, maybe we go to this place in Michigan and there is sand, it's a sandy, it's along um, Lake Huron, and there's these, just these bushes that grow, and they have these, like, now, I don't know if you guys noticed, I started with a blob, and I am slowly going in, and I'm adding, I'm allowing that blob to remain a blob, but then I'm going in, and I'm adding little details to this. A lot of my Art One students are coming in and, and saying they, they wish they knew how to sketch more. And so this is kind of the act of sketching. So I start out drawing really light. I'm not going back to erase a bunch of things. Um, I'm allowing whatever happens back here to, to be there. And I'm just adding kind of texture and adding more form to it. So I have myself a crazy little bush. Maybe I'll put some grass here. And as I come closer, maybe I have these large pieces of grass kind of coming up. Whee! And then I might go back and I might add um, maybe kind of that, that grass that's blooming right now. It's just kind of they have that big fluffy stuff on the end here. And these just kind of become you know those just start to become um, you know other bits of grass I might carry it on through maybe I want um, this to become kind of a pathway so because this is close to me this pathway is going to be kind of wide and then as this pathway goes farther and farther away from me. Maybe this pathway kind of follows the edge of this lake, like a little boardwalk or something. It gets smaller as it goes farther away. And these lines would kind of like line up like this. So if these are pieces of wood or whatever, they would come through like this. And if they're a piece of wood, they have some width to them. And they would get smaller as they go farther away from you. And so then what I'll do is I'll get out my colors 
and I will start to add some colors and I could paint this. I can color this. Um, I have lots of different choices, but that would be strictly just a landscape. Um, if I were doing modifications for um, our gentleman who is blind, maybe uh, what he does, he has different paints that are mixed with different gridded, gridded textures. And so he, when he feels one, he'll know it's yellow by the way it feels. And then he will be able to find his place of where he wants to put it. Um, a lot of times, our artists that are blind were actually born seeing people like they could see. And so he has in his memory kind of how things worked out. Um, there's another man who's blind who paints and he describes what he wants. And somebody will put the texture on the page like they would put these lines on the page. And then he goes and uses his finger and he paints within those areas. Um, so there's different, different people who work in different ways like that. But we have our background, we have our midground, um, which would include our hills and kind of our water here. And then we have our foreground. Our water might have like little little waves. Um, I'm not really very great at drawing waves. And so if I really wanted it to, to look like waves, I would probably um, pull up a picture. That's, that's definitely something I end up looking at pictures if I want something like that. Otherwise, maybe maybe I'll have just like little curvy areas, that kind of thing over here. Um, this area right here, because it's going up on sand, if I were to color it, um, this actually becomes kind of a greenish brown color. Um, and then it gets darker blue as I get farther out. But you know, these are all things that can be played with. And also, if this is real smooth and real calm, whatever's happening in the sky is often reflecting it. So you know, this, you know, might appear here. And I might see some like little sparkles on the water based on the sun up here. Oops, I'm sorry. So there's our landscape idea. I'm going to pause the video. Alrighty. So now I have a nice clean sheet of paper. And um, if I'm thinking about the way Courtney Cox goes about doing his drawing, um, I hope you clicked into his name and, and you see the link that takes you to the Google images. Courtney, um, uses huge pieces of paper. So he would take this piece of paper and he would take several others and he would tape them all together and make them bigger and bigger and they would grow. And so I think that if I were trying to imagine this, I would probably start out with one thing in the front. And you know, maybe this becomes my Ryle High School. Now, I want you to notice that before I was using a pencil. And I would encourage our students to use, um, for um, color, uh, landscapes and stuff, I would encourage our students to use crayons or to use coloring pencils or to use oil pastels, something like that. Um, when you do your cityscape, I want you to play with a pen. So see if you can get a blue pen or a black pen. It doesn't matter to me which one you get. Um, either one is kind of, um, either one's fine. And so maybe this is my Ryle High School. I'm going to put lots of windows out here. And maybe it doesn't quite look like the school. Maybe it does. I don't know. I'm going to put other bits of Ryle High School here because our school is really big, right? And just for fun, I'm going to give it a little bit of dimension. So there's the back of the building. Doesn't quite look like that, but we're going to roll with it. And we'll give doors out here and doors out here. You don't have to do Ryle High School. You can draw a whole bunch of um, skyscrapers. So here, I'm going to go ahead and put the road. This is the little road. And then we have the hills. Whee! And there's another hill. And so these are all the hills that when I first started teaching here, I was delighted with. Like who knew that there were good sled riding hills in Boone County because I didn't know that. So, whee! And here's 42 out in front of the school. But before we get to 42, maybe we need The sidewalk. And 
And maybe we want a dog out here. The dog's going to look like a cat. Here, we'll give him a dog face. Looks kind of like a wolf. Here, we'll give him a fluffy tail, though. There, he looks... I don't know if he looks less creepy. Who knows? And we'll give him a leash, and we'll give him a person. So with a person, I started with a head, and I started with a body, and I'm going to start with a, there's a leg, and they need an arm, and maybe an arm, yeah, they're kind of jiving there when they're walking their pup dog, um, maybe we'll give them a baseball cap and shorts, we don't want them walking out here naked, that would just be weird, and maybe a t-shirt. Maybe I put other kids out here. Maybe I, uh, let's see here. Over here, we're going to put um, a football stadium. Boop, 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 boop. And we'll give it the... So encourage the kids to draw what they know for their cityscape. Really, truly, I guess I'm doing a suburb scape, aren't I? Um, see if you can get them to think about, you know, if they're, if they're in, on here sketching, you know, what's your house look like? What's your neighbor's house look like? What, what, what's down the street from where you live? Do you have a favorite place to play? Um, do you, let's see, I think that there's like a little building over here. <laughs> um, are there farms around you? Um, are there... animals around you? Are there playscapes around you? So we have Ryle, and then back here, you know, maybe we, we put Gray Middle School. I'm not sure what Gray Middle School looks like. Um, and then over here, way back here, we have Shirley Mann Elementary. So we're going to put Shirley Mann in there, and we'll put some details that look more like Shirley Mann. They have that, like, circle out front. Um, and then they have like the parking lot that's over on the side. And then there's the road that kind of connects down past this school. And we have this road that <laughs> connects into this road. And there's some trees over here. So basically, you're creating this map, this, this crazy, amazing city map of where you live. And because I'm doing this in pen, I can't go back and fix this. So I'm just going to have to, like, be groovy with leaving it just the way it is. And so it might just become something completely silly and utterly impossible. So, like, if this road comes around here, I think there's, there's like, school buses back over here, like the bus garage. They might be over here, too. Um, so I might draw some school buses in here. So have some fun with this and see what you come up with. Um, and just encourage your, your buddies to do as many details and just ask them questions about what they're doing. Have some fun with it. Um, <laughs> this is actually a whole lot more fun than I expected it to be. Um, if they, I would encourage them to draw with pen. and. To, to fill it in and if you even wanted to get so far as to get some of yours started and then you draw with them a little bit if you can um that would probably be good so you can show them how you're adding more details and if you um want to go back and you want to use coloring pencils or you want to use maybe different color pens i know that like alex used to like using different color pens when he was doing different things like this if they want to use a black pen they can um but the fun thing is, is that we don't often think about a pen as being a an art medium and it totally is and there's more and more artists that are doing fun things with it you can build up areas of value like this or you have very very light areas you know if i draw real light with my ballpoint pen i have a very light value over here so have some fun and uh, see what you come up with. I hope you all had a good weekend.